Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Thursday, the 25th of August. Capture terrorist confesses Pakistan Army's role in terrorism in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan court extends former PM Imran Khan's pre-arrest bail on terrorism charges. And women open library to counter growing isolation in Afghanistan. Now for all the details, several South Asian nations have been relentlessly pummeled by heavy rainfall in recent months, affecting thousands of people and paralyzing normal life. On Thursday, farmlands as well as residential areas were seen submerged in floodwaters in central India after incessant rains caused rivers to overflow. Floods triggered by incessant rains in central India in recent days has battered most of the region, destroying crops and paralyzing normal life. Farmlands as well as residential areas were seen submerged in flood waters after incessant rains caused Betwa River to overflow in Vidisha city. Farmers said that almost all of their crops have been destroyed because of the heavy rainfall and hundreds of hectares of agricultural land, mainly wheat, is underwater. गांव तो बस जो ऊंचे ऊंचे पे हैं वही घर बचे हैं बाकी जो नीचे हैं कुछ डूब गए हैं नीचे नीचे घर वो एक दो घर भी गए हैं उनमें और सब धान के किसान हैं हमारे यहाँ धान पूरी खत्म हो चुकी सबकी बहुत नुकसान हुआ है सर बलोरी में वाइल्ड रेस्क्यू एफर्ट्स कंटिन्यू मोर देन 7500 पीपल फ्रॉम नाइन सीवियरली अफेक्टेड डिस्ट्रिक्ट्स हैव बीन शिफ्टेड टू सेफर ग्राउंड्स Meanwhile, fresh spell of rain in parts of Pakistan's southern Sindh province have added to woes of residents of Hyderabad city already flooded with accumulated rainwater, especially in the low-lying areas this week. The flooding has caused suspension of business, trade and commercial activities in major markets and bazaars at low-lying areas of Hyderabad. चार फीट पानी भरा हुआ है और एक 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 महीना हो गया है और यहाँ पर निकालने वाला कोई नहीं है इंतजामिया कुछ मदद नहीं कर रही है और खाने पीने की परेशानी हम एक 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 टाइम कभी कोई दे जाता है तो खा लेते हैं Pakistan has urged the international community for assistance in the relief efforts as it is unable to cope with the relief and rehabilitation caused by massive floods triggered by torrential rains killing over 800 people since last month officials said While South Asia's monsoon rains follow natural atmospheric patterns, the seasonal rains are expected to become more erratic and torrential as global temperatures continue to climb. And moving on, a terrorist belonging to Pakistan-based Lashkar-e-Taiba outfit who was captured by the Indian Army this week has confessed he was sent by a Pakistan Army official on a suicide mission to kill Indian soldiers. Two major infiltration attempts were foiled by security forces in the border area in the last 72 hours. On August 21st, Tabarak Hussain, the Pakistani terrorist, was shot and captured while attempting to cross into Jammu and Kashmir territory. Currently undergoing treatment at an army hospital, he revealed he was paid rupees thirty thousand by a Pakistani colonel named Yunus Chaudhary to carry out the terror attacks. In another infiltration bid, two other terrorists were killed after they stepped on a mine field. Security forces also recovered a huge cache of arms and ammunition from the area. <laughs> जंगल बॉर्डर में जंगल बॉर्डर पे किसते फौजियां दे फौजियां And in news from Pakistan, a Pakistani court on Thursday extended former Prime Minister Imran Khan's pre-arrest bail until 1st September as he faces police charges of terrorism for comments he had made in a recent speech about the judiciary. 
Khan appeared at a district court in Islamabad amid tight security. On 20th August, police had filed charges against Khan, the chief of opposition PTI party, over what they said was a threat in the speech in which he spoke about police torture of his aide Shehbaz Gill, who faces sedition charges for inciting mutiny in the military. Khan has been campaigning for new elections since being forced to step down this year, but a conviction would disqualify him. The former premier maintained after the hearing he had said nothing wrong in the speech last week. His supporters and PTI leaders have threatened a mass protest if he is arrested. And moving on, the lush green mountainous valleys are characteristic of Pakistan-administered Kashmir's geography, making it one of the most beautiful regions on the subcontinent and has huge potential of becoming a tourism hub. However, in action by authorities in Pakistan to bring about development and improve basic infrastructure over the years has irked the local residents. Residents in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have raised concern over the declining tourism due to poor road infrastructure and negligent attitude of the Pakistan government towards the illegally occupied region. They cite poor roads and lack of accommodation facilities, transportation and poor network connectivity have led to a decline in tourist footfall. The locals emphasize that if the road network is laid in their area, the tourism sector can be greatly developed and the people will benefit from it as employment opportunities will open up for them. Road infrastructure is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. It is not going to be able to do it. People in Pakistan-administered Kashmir have time and again lamented that with proper policies and planning, the tourism sector can give a major boost to the economy of the region. However, it has remained backwards and underdeveloped due to apathy and negligence of the Pakistan government. And a team of the International Monetary Fund met Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikramasinghe on Wednesday and began talks to finalize a bailout package and restructure debt of about $29 billion. The island nation has been struggling with soaring inflation, economic contraction and a severe shortage of essential items caused by a record slump in foreign reserves. The IMF International Monetary Fund team met Sri Lanka's President Ranil Vikrama Singhe on Wednesday for talks to finalize a bailout package including restructuring debt of about $29 billion amid the nation's worst financial crisis in more than seven decades. The team will be in Sri Lanka until August 31st. The second visit in three months comes as the country scrambles to lock down a staff-level pact for a possible $3 billion program. The main sticking point is how to find a sustainable track for Sri Lanka's unwieldy debt which stood at 114% of GDP at the end of the last year. For months, the island nation's population of 22 million has struggled with soaring inflation, economic contraction and a severe shortage of essential items of food, fuel and medicine caused by a record slump in foreign reserves. In July, the then-president Gotabaya Rajpaksa fled the country and resigned after a mass uprising trigger by what many Sri Lankans saw as his mishandling of the crisis. President Ranil Vikramasinghe, who is also the finance minister, plans to ask Japan to lead talks on bilateral debt restructuring after Sri Lanka secures IMF support. Well, since taking over Afghanistan a year ago, the Islamist Taliban has imposed several restrictions on women, including girls being banned from high school. Taking matter in their hands, Afghan women's rights activists this week opened a library in Kabul, hoping to provide an oasis for women increasingly cut off from education and public life under the ruling Taliban. Afghan women's rights activists opened a library in Kabul on Wednesday, hoping to provide an oasis for women increasingly cut off from education and public life under the ruling Taliban. Since taking over Afghanistan a year ago, the Islamist Taliban have said women should not leave the home without a male relative and must cover their faces, though some women in urban centers ignore the rule. Secondary schools for girls largely remain closed after the Taliban went back on promises to open them in March. The 
برای گروه هایی که مخالف زن هستند، مخالف حضور زن هستند، مخالف فعالیت زنان هستند، نشان بودیم که اگر شما دروازه های مکاتب را بسته بکنین، اگر شما محدودیت تحصیلی برای دانشجویان وضع بکنین، اگر شما از یک هویت، از یک نسل شما انکار بکنین، ولی زنای افغانستان حالا زنای هستند که با سواد شدن، خودشان را مشناستن، و توانایی از این دارند که در جامعه بیاین و خودشان تعریف بکنند. The books are mostly donated by teachers, poets and authors to the Crystal Bayat Foundation, an Afghan women's rights organization which helps set up the library. Several women activists who have taken part in protests in recent months also helped establish the library in a rented shop in a mall that has a number of stores catering to women. بر از این که برای طالبا بفهمانیم که زنان این پیکری از جامعه است و نیاز مبرم است برای زنان افغانستان و زنان باید درس بخوانند و زنان باید کار کنند مطالعه داشته باشند چون زن با زن با سواد باعث میشه که جامعه بهتر داشته باشه جامعه آرام تر داشته باشه هر چی آگاهی بالاتر بره و فکر میکنم خشونت ها کمتر میشه و جنگ کمتر خواهد بود به خاطر کتابخانه را ایجاد کردیم The Taliban see they respect women's rights in accordance with the interpretation of Islamic law and that since March they have been working on a way of opening girls' high schools. Western governments have stepped up their condemnation of the Taliban's widening elimination of women from public life. Many Afghan women have expressed frustration and called for Taliban authorities to respect their rights. In news from Bangladesh, members of the Rohingya refugee community living in squalid camps in Bangladesh have expressed they are ready to return back to their home country, Myanmar, five years after their exodus. But they want guarantees of their safety and to be recognized as citizens, not as bad men or terrorists. As August 25 marks five years since the exodus of Rohingya refugees from Myanmar, the inhabitants of the Kutupalong refugee camp in Cox's Bazar in Bangladesh have expressed they are ready to return home. More than a million Rohingya live in squalid camps in southern Bangladesh, comprising the world's largest refugee settlement, with little prospect of returning to Myanmar, where they are mostly denied citizenship and other rights. The Rohingya say they want guarantees of their safety and recognition as citizens before returning, not as bad men or terrorists. Please, carry on. The vast majority fled to neighboring Bangladesh during a military crackdown in 2017 that the United Nations has said was carried out with genocidal intent. The UN says conditions are not yet right for return. Myanmar denies genocide, saying it was waging a legitimate campaign against insurgents who attacked police posts. Well, that's the way it was in South Asia this evening. Before we conclude, the top stories once again. Captured terrorist confesses Pakistan Army's role in terrorism in India's Jammu and Kashmir. Pakistan court extends former PM Imran Khan's pre-arrest bail on terrorism charges. And women open library to counter growing isolation in Afghanistan. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash SAsianewsline and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night.